June 25th, Orléans. Dead France is returning to life. Our army swells with new recruits. In olden times, men swore fealty only to their particular lord. Now we fight not for insolent lords and ladies, but for France. For all of us, Jean is France. There is no distinction in our minds. The Dauphin himself has arrived in Orléans. Never have I seen such a celebration. France needs a king, so we must escort the Dauphin to Rennes, where he can be properly crowned. Yet the city of Rennes is dangerously menaced by the Anglo-Burgundian army. The cities of Troyes and Chalon also bar the way. Jean commands that we must liberate all three cities before the coronation, and we eagerly seek to fight. Oh, you. Oh, you. Oh, you. Oh, you. 
are trying to cross the river. Oh, <laughs> 
hast du es doch.
British employees have been defeated.
As we rode into Rhin, a sea of peasants and lords knelt before Jean. Some even knelt to kiss a horse's hoofprints, cannon thundered, and a thousand flags danced in the breeze. In the enormous palace, the Dauphin knelt before the Archbishop and rose as King of France. Prayers, anthems, and sermons filled the great chateau. Interspersed among perfumed dukes and ladies were tattered soldiers from our army, many still bearing wounds. Jeanne herself was at the king's side, as was her bedraggled battle standard. Despite the celebration, I know in my heart that this war is far from over. Our fathers and grandfathers died fighting against the English. Jeanne gives us hope, but I do not know if hope is enough to ensure victory. Thank you. 